Tick tock, time to rock. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, and Merry Christmas to everyone who's watching from all around the world. I'm your friendly neighborhood philosopher, David Wood, and with me now is the most inspiring philosopher on YouTube, Mike Jones. Yeah, thanks for having me. How you doing, <laughs> good Mike? Good to be back. How you doing? Good. Good, uh, good. Before we uh, before we jump into things, um, I've got a link to your channel in the description box. Why don't you go ahead and tell everyone a little bit about what you do over on Inspiring Philosophy? Yeah, I make a lot of graphic-driven videos. Uh, it's a little different than here, but I cover a lot of things with defending Christianity. I got a whole series on archaeology coming up. I have a video on Abraham, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, and then I'm going to have a big Exodus documentary coming out in March. Big video on the census of Quirinius after that. So. Do a lot of stuff just defending Christianity in general and a lot of philosophical videos as well. Um, yeah, and you, you mentioned you mentioned the graphic style and that your your videos are uh, just you you talking usually and then graphics popping up on the screen. And it's funny because I saw I saw, I've been I've been watching your videos for years, but when I first saw your stuff years ago, I was like, "There's no way this will work. There's no way." <laughs> There's no way this is going to work at all, <laughs> and it worked. How many how many subscribers are you up to? I know you put you passed you passed a uh, hundred thousand a while back. So what are you up to now? I think one hundred sixty seven thousand. One hundred sixty seven thousand. So, ladies and gentlemen, the great D Wood can be wrong. I would have said nope, wrong way, not going to work. Not here on YouTube. Got to be there talking directly to the camera for this to work. All uh, right. Well, so what? Well, that's cool because that means it's just the content. People just like the content over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, quick, uh, quick comment here from Shaban Hussein. Shaban said, "Ag seventeen apologetics bless God bless you immensely." Ex Muslim here. My life was a complete hell for me. I was on the verge of suicide, but your videos helped me discover Christ. I found happiness in Christ. We're happy to uh, happy to help Shaban. And um, if you want to, you can go ahead and send me a, an email if, um, if there's anything I can do to help you. All right, and we got we got what do you meme over in the chat? Uh, just calling us heretics. So yeah, he's he's trouble. He's that's trouble. That's good. That's good. <laughs> you gotta watch out for that guy. That's another. Mm -hmm. That's another guy who's uh, who's blowing up. John just hit a hundred thousand. So yeah. yeah, there was a time when there were, I think it was, me and RZIM were over a hundred thousand. I don't think anyone else was. Now there's a bunch. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right. Well, we're here to talk about Christmas. And why I wanted you to have you on here is you're one of the only people I know who will take some topic that everyone's talking about and then go and read all of these <laughs> old sources that no one's ever heard of and read all of them and go through all of them. And then that kind of puts you in a different category from everyone else who's talking about it. So what, what, what kind of books uh, are actually relevant to a discussion of like the origins of Christmas? Well, people wouldn't really know, but I mean, things like uh, Macrobius's book on Saturnalia, the Philokalian calendar, uh, uh, ancient works like Dionysus Exegus, uh, Julius Africanus or Julius Sextus even. I mean, and then you get to more like the traditional stuff. Uh, so Snorri Sturluson, he's a Norse cro uh, chronological uh, historian type for chron mm. chronicler uh, that was documenting a lot of stuff with regards to the Norse past. So things like that. And then, of course, there's other books like a dictionary of English folklore uh, that are written in modern authors who do a lot of really great research that you can you know, draw from and whatnot. So I've gone through as much as I can on Christmas and just to try to find the origins of Christmas traditions. And as far as I can tell nothing goes back to paganism i have looked so hard and i can't find anything now that's interesting because even right now as we're talking we got the comment section and so here's uh john good who said christmas is still pagan though i said ist not because that could be a typo but it could be german right and and could be <laughs> you know that's is pagan right so uh christmas is still pagan though can't associate god with a lie fact and he said so here you have john good saying it's a fact that christmas is pagan and yet you're just saying you, you you can't find anything that that really traces uh christmas back to paganism as far as i can tell there's there's three broad camps there's the 
Uh, Christians who say Christmas is pagan and therefore stay away from it. Stay away from it. If you're celebrating it, you're celebrating paganism. And then you have the Christians who believe that Christmas does have some pagan origins, but they don't care a whole lot, right? They're like, look, I'm, I, I, I don't know what those ancient people were doing with that thing, but that's not what I'm doing with that thing. So I don't, you know, stop, stop complaining about it. And then you have the guys like you who are saying, actually, guys, uh, no, you've, you've bought into this ongoing myth that this can all be traced back to paganism and you need to break out of it. Does that, does that sound about right? Yeah, and I was in the second group for the longest time, and my original goal was to do videos on who cares if it's pagan. But then I started looking at the traditions, researching for the video, and I was like, there's just nothing here. Not even mistletoe, yule logs, the date of Christmas. I can't find anything. None of it goes back to paganism. Hmm. Well, um, I'll go ahead and uh, let you give a little summary here. Uh, wait, I'm, I'm interested in this, though. Cheryl R. said, an ad for Matt Frad, no Muslim charity? Apparently, they uh, people normally get ads on my channel that are for Muslim ch charities because the algorithm knows that 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 lots of Muslims watch my channel. Mm -hmm. But apparently, uh, there's a Matt Frad ad before my before my video. That is uh, that is interesting. All right, so here's the here's the general approach we'll we'll take for this live stream. Um, I'll go ahead and give you a couple minutes um, here at the beginning to uh, break down what you did find when you started doing some. Uh, some research on this issue, and then we will look through some of the relevant parts of a History Channel article, because uh, my wife was showing me this this History Channel article, and they're saying, I mean, there, there's some interesting stuff in there, and so uh, it'd be good to, to take a look at it, but they are they are giving some of the, the standard origin of Christmas uh, type uh, explanations of things. And so we'll read through a little bit of that and and get your perspective on them. And we'll also take some questions in the chat. Does that sound all right? That sounds good, yeah. All right, well, uh, go ahead and give us a little introduction here to, to this topic. Yeah, so the idea that Christmas is pagan is based on a lot of modern misconceptions. People usually start with the date, December 25th. And they'll say, well, there were pagan holidays on that day. As far as we can tell in ancient Rome, no, there wasn't. People will bring up whole holidays like Sol Invictus, the birth of the Invincible Sun. And they'll say things like, oh, well, Sol Invictus was on 1225, not until 354 AD. The first source to mention it is the Philokalian calendar. Uh, and it says that you know th this is the day the sun was born, but it doesn't actually mention any festivals on that day. Uh, and the uh, Philokalian calendar also says that Aurelian, the earlier emperor everyone says, put Sol Invictus on 1225. It says that he actually worshipped the sun with chariot races in October every four years. Uh, the Julio uh, Fasti inscriptions say sun worship was on August 8th, 9th to 28th, and maybe December 11th. Never mentions December 25th. Uh, people will say, well, the winter solstice was this big significant thing. No, it wasn't. It's true the Julian calendar says the winter solstice was on 1225. But not everyone agreed. Pliny the Elder says it was on the 26th. Uh, Columella says it was on the 23rd. Uh, no one actually was really sure, but even at that, they didn't really have a winter solstice celebration. They treated it kind of like you do. You look up and you go, oh yeah, it's winter solstice. Anyway, back to work. Christmas is almost here. That was not their big holiday. Their big holiday was on Saturnalia, which was on December 17th, according to Macrobius in Saturnalia Book 1, Chapter 10. Uh, he says it was 14 days before January. And based on their dating, that puts Saturnalia December 17th. People will say, well, Mithra was born on 1225. Again, no evidence. Uh, Roger Beck, who wrote a great big book called uh, Merkel, Merkel Box Mithras, says there's just no evidence Mithra was ever given a birth date. Uh, people will say, well, what about Yule? Yule was celebrated by the Norsemen. They worshipped on 1225. Well, St. Bede says they calculated their seasons according to the moon. And Snorri Sturluson, this early Norse uh, historian, he says that King Haakon the Good established Yule on December 25th to coincide with Christmas. So he says this in his History of the Kings of Norway. So Yule was put on December 25th to coincide with Christmas. Prior to that, there's an early uh, historian called Thitmar, and he says the Danes sacrificed to pagan gods in January after the 6th. So again, no evidence of any pagan holidays on December 25th. And same with a lot of these traditions, Christmas trees, as far as I can tell, they go back to about 1571 uh, in Germany, probably more from paradise trees. 
a paradise tree was something used in an Adam and Eve play, and their feast day was on 1224. Okay, well, if you're going to do an Adam and Eve play, you need a tree, and the only trees that are available in Germany in the winter are going to be pine trees. So they would decorate it you know, to match the Adam and Eve tree. And, of course, uh, you don't leave food. To let, you don't let food go to waste in medieval Europe, so what do you do? Well, you eat it. And so it probably just got associated with December, the uh, Christmas Eve, and then December 25th, slowly by morphing into that. The first mention of a paradise of a um, Christmas tree is in a city called Alsace in 1576. Uh, so again, there's just no evidence any of these traditions go back to paganism. And I can cover some more as we go through this article, mm-hmm. but I mean, there's just no evidence as far as I can tell. Yeah, let's uh, deal with a, a quick misconception here. So Dylan C said, so. You mean to tell me the ancient Israelites rolled around in the snow and had Christmas trees in the desert? Um, Yeah, uh, Dylan, no offense, but you might want to study a little something on comprehension. Um, Mike, did you you say anything like that? (laughs) No. Are you saying that Christmas is an ancient Israelite, <laughs> an ancient Israelite celebration. No, of course not. Okay. It's not All an right. ancient Israelite celebration. So, so Dylan, um, I, I'm not, I'm not even sure I can classify this as a, as a straw man, but, uh, you're, you're in that direction of attacking a position that no one has, has actually advocated. Um, so if you want to respond to something that IP has said here, Oh, I shouldn't call you IP. Your initials are IP, but then it sounds like I'm saying that I'm I'm peeing or something. <laughs> um, Doesn't matter. All right, I'm going to call you Mike Jones. That'll work. All right. So, let's go ahead and check out a little of this, um, little of this history channel article. Go ahead and read a little bit, and uh, some some of it might may, may be right, some of it may be wrong. Um, we'll go ahead and check it out and see what we come up with. All right, Christmas history, facts, and trivia. So this is um, was originally uh, published two years ago, and they updated it. So this is the latest on Christmas. This is the latest, most up-to-date information from the History Channel. And they say, learn why we kiss under the mistletoe. Uh, the commercial origins of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, whether Jesus was really born on Christmas Day, and more. And let's go ahead and scroll down. Christmas facts and trivia. They might have an intro here. Let's see. Long before there was a Grinch who stole Christmas, there was Krampus, the devilish half-man, half-goat that helps out jolly St. Nicholas by stuffing naughty Austrian children in sacks and dragging them to hell. Yes, the true history of Christmas is as colorful as your neighbor's seizure-inducing house light display. Learn more about the pagan origins of Christmas. This already shows that you're wrong, uh, Mike. Oh. You said it can't be traced back to pagan origins. So, uh, But we're about to learn more about the pagan origins of Christmas traditions and gather some fun trivia to share over a mug of expired eggnog. All right, so do you know who Krampus is? Yeah, he's a. Um, it comes from the German word for claw. Uh, he's an old German a folk tradition that started around in the Austria Alp region in southern Germany. Uh, as far as we can tell, there's no evidence he goes back to paganism. He probably was just a devil that they just called Krampus, like a version of Satan. Uh, the good evidence for that is that who is his counterpart? A saint, hmm. a saint in Krampus. So I mean, saints are always battling demons and. Uh, medieval Catholic uh, traditions and whatnot. So Krampus is probably just a uh, version of the devil. Uh, and Krampus wasn't really universal. For example, in France, there was, there was instead of Krampus going around with Saint Nicholas, you had Old Man Whipper, who was this old guy who was punished and he's got to now serve Saint Nicholas, and he goes around and he whips children, kind of thing. Krampus is just like the Bavarian version of him. It's an old Christian tradition, and there's no evidence it goes back to a pagan origin. Um, yeah, the uh, the Germans were all, they were always a bit darker. <laughs> uh, did you ever check out Struvelpeter? No. What is that? That was like their their stories um, for little kids to learn not to 
you know, suck their thumbs and things like that. But like their their versions of stories that you tell little kids to help them stop doing things where there's there's this uh, evil barber who's going to show up. And if you suck on your thumbs, he's going to randomly show up and, and, and shear your your thumbs off. And so but they're all like that. They're all like massively bloody stories uh, to tell to get kids not to not to do this. And so, yeah, Krampus sounds pretty cool. Um, <laughs> all right. Now, let's let's get into their case here. Was Saturnalia the original Christmas? The ancient Roman festival of Saturnalia was the most anticipated week on the Roman calendar, celebrated every December during the winter solstice. In paying homage to Saturn, the god of time and agriculture, Romans would take the week off from work. Even the slaves decorate their homes with pine wreaths, see, pine trees, pine wreaths, mm -hmm light festive candles, attend raucous parties and feasts, and exchange gifts and offerings. When the Roman Empire embraced Christianity, many of these traditions were carried over to the celebration of Christmas. Let me see if there's any more on Saturnalia. I know they have a separate article on there. Oh, yeah, we do. Yeah. There's not much. What's funny is that when you go click on that other article, it, mm -hmm. doesn't, mention the pine, it doesn't mention the pine wreaths. Hmm. So... I don't know, their own source, the uh, the other History Gen article, doesn't mention this pine wreath because they just made it up. There's no evidence. If you read Macrobius' big book on Saturnalia, he never mentions <laughs> hold on, hold, pine hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we go on here, um, I, I'm always interested in sentences that I know no one has ever uttered before. And I'm pretty <laughs> sure no one has ever said, if you read... Macrobius's really big book <laughs> on Saturnalia. Well, you know, I've got uh, some free time on the Saturday. Yeah, you know, just yeah. go through it. You know? All right, you go ahead and continue. I just thought that was a, a funny sentence. Go ahead. Yeah, there, there's just no evidence that... Well, first of all, it wasn't a winter solstice celebration. It was celebrated on December 17th to honor the god Saturn. And they didn't decorate with greenery or pine wreaths, as far as we're aware. They just... Basically, it was a day when slaves got to pretend to be masters. It was like the day they, the role playing, switching kind of thing. They did exchange gifts, but I mean, you exchange gifts on almost every holiday. Uh, there was probably candles, but I mean, back then candles were associated with almost everything because that's how you had light. Uh, they had parties and feasts. I mean, but so did everyone. I mean, it's not like a big deal. But no, there were no pineries involved with Saturnalia. Uh, they didn't. To, and and it, this idea that it was a winter solstice celebration is just false. It was to honor the god Saturn, who was the god of agriculture. My favorite thing I've ever heard, and they don't say this, but there's a documentary on Psalm 119 Ministries called The Christmas Question. And they say, well, the, uh, the, the symbol of the god Saturn was mistletoe. Okay, that's just false. I mean, mistletoe is a weed. You're telling me the god of agriculture has a symbol that's a weed. That's like a goddess of chastity having a stripper pole for her symbol. It wouldn't make any sense. And so, it, no, the god Saturn, his symbol of anything was wheat. Uh, and they basically just honored the fact that they had a you know a good festival and they would just you know, have a party or whatnot. But Christians never borrowed anything from Saturnalia. It died out long before a lot of the Christmas traditions we have now were came, were uh, made up by Europeans throughout their history. All right. And... Let's see. Let's deal with a quick, uh, since we talked about the um, pine wreaths here, uh, and we have this from, let's see, move things around. Robin says, uh, just says, pagan temple with eight Christmas trees on there. So are Christmas trees a pagan temple? No. <laughs> are you positive? What? I'm 99% positive. I mean... <laughs> I don't even know where they're getting that from. So you're telling us are, there's a chance. <laughs> if people are worried about pine trees, let me read Isaiah 41, 19 to 20. I will put in the wilderness the cedar, the myrtle, and the olive. I will set in the desert the cypress, the plain, and the pine together, that they may see and know and may consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this, the Holy One of Israel has created it. So in the Bible, God says the pine tree is a symbol of him. End of story. Well, Robin, are you saying that the symbol of God here is a pagan temple? I'll leave it up to you, Robin. You can fill us in here. 
Oh, here's a quick comment uh, directed towards you. Uh, Sasha Arouse says, thank you so much for your videos, inspiring philosophy. I was having immense doubts about Christianity and your videos helped restore my faith. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. I appreciate it. That means a lot. I appreciate that. All right. Let's, um, let's go ahead and read. And I think they don't make much of a case beyond, as far as their, the pagan origins point, they don't really say much beyond... Uh, that initial point about Saturnalia and was Jesus born on December 25th? We'll go ahead and scroll through there a little bit, though. But all right, let's. Uh, was Jesus really born on December 25th? There's no solid evidence that Jesus was born in December. In fact, his birth wasn't celebrated or even mentioned until centuries after the establishment of Christianity. Uh, I that's got to be bad writing there because I, they can't be saying that his birth wasn't mentioned because you've got his birth in the <laughs> Bible. Um, so, matter of fact, do they say, yeah, clues from the biblical account. Okay, so I, I hope they're not saying that the Bible was written centuries after <laughs> after the origin of Christianity. Clues from the biblical account point to a spring birth, shepherds tending their flocks, and it's likely that the Romans chose December 25th as the date to coincide with Saturnalia and convince the empire's remaining pagans to accept the strange new religion. Now, now this is this is just interesting, by the way, right? So let me get this straight. So there's some remaining pagans. Christianity has taken over. There's some remaining pagans. How are we going to win those pagans over to Christianity? Well, we're going to make Jesus born on December 25th in order to win those pagans over, right? So that 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 seems to be the the going theory here now um i've heard i've heard so ba basically I, i've heard that classic story that there was a pagan festival on the 25th and christians set up a kind of rival uh celebration on that day and you know that became that became christmas and then more recently over the past couple of years i've heard that there was just this early Christian belief that a prophet or special person would be born would be um, something like conceived on the same day as his death, and so some Christians at some point calculated the day based on the day of Jesus' death, the day when he would have been conceived, and then added nine months to that to say that's when he would have been born, and they got December twenty fifth. I'm sure I'm getting some of that wrong, but is that have you? What's the idea there? No, you're essentially getting most of it right. The Christians, early Christians, believed Jesus was perfect, and therefore he had to have perfect uh, gestation. So he would die on the same day he was conceived, and they believed because he was a perfect man that he had to do that as well. Uh, so they they said, well, if he died on March 25th, just count forward nine months. And that you can see that in the work of like Dionysus, Exegus, uh, Jerome mentions it. I, Saint Augustine also mentions it somewhere. Uh, but that was generally what they thought. Uh, Julius Africanus might even mention it. Hippolytus uh, talks a little bit about it. But, you know, were they right? I don't know, and I don't really care. But they didn't pick it for pagan reasons. They picked it because they actually thought this was the day Jesus was born. And the whole stuff about, well, you know, there were, there were flocks and there were shepherds in the fields. Guys, we're talking about Palestine. We're, we're not talking about Europe. I mean, it's a lot warmer there. In fact, you can make the case that Jesus could have been born in the winter because shepherds in the Middle East would wander miles away from towns to uh, feed their flocks. But in the winters, they would try to stay close to their towns because, you know, it would get they, it would be a, it, there was a possibility it could have rain and it could be a little bit colder. So they would stay closer to uh, where they lived. So it may very well have been late fall, early spring, winter. But at the end of the day, we don't know. But we do know that Christians picked this date. Because they actually thought Jesus would die on the same day he was conceived, March 25th, count forward nine months. So, um, just to break this down for everyone, the classic position favoring paganism that we all hear is there was a pagan festival on December 25th. Christians wanted to set something up in order to win the hearts of the pagans or to rival them so that they were doing something on the same day. 
uh, because if there were a lot of pagan converts, then pagans would have been used to celebrating on that day. And so why not why not uh, celebrate the birth of Jesus at that time and so on? Something like that. And so the claim here would be, well, whatever Christians ended up celebrating, it was at least derived from paganism. They basically took over the day. And what we actually find is that Christians, early Christians had a weird idea. So I don't see any basis for the idea. But what Mike is saying here is that if you want to say, hey, they had the wrong idea about someone like Jesus being uh, conceived on the same day that he would die, and therefore, okay, March 25th, add nine months, that's when he about when he would have been born, so he would have been born December 25th. Silly idea, I would say. Silly, we, strange idea, but Mike's saying, it, you could say it's a silly idea, but they didn't get it from, it, it's not a pagan idea, right? They didn't say, oh, the pagans are saying that Jesus would have been born, you know, on, on such and such date based on calculating. They're not getting that from pagans. They just had a weird idea that we reject. And so you can say wrong about their idea, but not uh, not pagan in origin. It's also kind of a weird idea to think the Christians were doing this. I yep. mean, we don't do it today. Yeah. We're not going to be like, hey, guys, really bring the Muslims in. We got to move our holidays to Ramadan. Yeah. That'd be silly. I mean, there's no history of Christians doing this, yeah. of moving holidays around to sort of meet pagans needs. They just didn't do that. Mm -hmm. um, all right. This is kind of a different topic, but let's see here. Can you explain what was, what was written in Jeremiah 10, 1 through 10? Yeah, Jeremiah 10. So that's about crafting idols. Uh, so if you actually read past the first couple of verses, you'll see that. He even says the word idols a couple of times in the whole chapter. So what he's basically describing is when the ancient pagans during the days of Israel, they would chop down trees and then they would carve them into idols. And then after they had a wooden idol, they could decorate it with gold and silver and whatnot. If you read to verse 5, it says their idols are like scarecrows in a cucumber field. That sounds like crafting an idol it doesn't sound like a christmas tree how many times have you heard christmas trees described as scarecrows mm -hmm. it doesn't make any sense he goes on to say they cannot speak they have to be carried for they cannot walk okay well it seems to be describing little wooden figurines that have legs but they can't walk they have a mouth but they can't speak they cut down trees in the forest then they it works by the hands of a craftsman to deck to turn into his little idol then they decorate it this is about idol crafting pick up any scholarly commentary on jeremiah Anyone, every scholar I've read will say this is about crafting idols. It has nothing to do with Christmas trees. Mm -hmm. And let me see here. You might want to get this, pull this up real quick. Actually. Jeremiah 10. Yeah, might want to just read through it because you probably get this a lot, don't you? Oh, I, I have a video on it, and I still get it every year. Same, some somebody comes out of the woodworks and is like, "Well, Jeremiah," and I'm like, "Oh, here we go again." And it is, guys. This is an important point, right? Um, and I'm saying it's an important point because let's assume uh, that Mike here is wrong, and Christmas does have some sort of pagan origin, and that Christmas trees are somehow pagan or something like that. Let's assume all of that is correct. That's no excuse for, for really sloppy exegesis. You know what I mean? You, you shouldn't say, oh, well, you know, in order to defend my point, I'll be extremely sloppy in, um, in reading these passages. So let me see if I can get this up on the screen here. And so idols in the living God. Let's go ahead and read it. Idols in the living God. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word that the Lord speaks to you, O house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, learn not the ways of the nations, nor be dismayed at the signs of the heavens, because the nations are dismayed at them. For the customs of the peoples are vanity. A tree from the forest is cut down. Ha ha! <laughs> Just like cutting down a Christmas tree. Guys, if you're not familiar with this, this is the argument here. Um, God is condemning people for cutting down trees from the, from the forest. And that's what you do with your Christmas trees, decorating them and so on. Um, a tree from the forest is cut down and worked 
with an axe by the hands of a craftsman. They decorate it with silver and gold. Oh my goodness. How much, how much clearer could it be that this is talking about your Christmas trees? You decorate them, don't you? They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with hammer and nails so that it cannot move. Their idols are like scarecrows in a cucumber field, and they cannot speak. They have to be carried, for they cannot walk. Do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither is it in them to do good. And so, you know, the passage continues, but yeah, guys, this is about cutting down cutting down a tree, which you'll find often in the prophets, cutting down a tree and making an idol out of it. This is not about <laughs> it's not about a a Christmas tree, unless you're worshiping a Christmas tree, and then you've got a case. Then this, you could say this is uh, this is applied to you. All right. Well, did did they say anything else about uh? Did they say anything else about? I think that was not all, that I've seen. I think that was all that was in the article, wasn't it? Oh, hang on. In the Christmas article. Yeah, in that That's article. That's all they say with regards to Jesus' birth. Yeah, they don't, again, the, the problem with this article is they don't even have sources. Their own so, their sources are their own other articles which don't have sources. It's just mm -hmm. they're citing themselves and never giving real sources. Yeah, um, that, that, that's kind of a problem, um, not giving sources from what you're saying. You guys, you guys know what we're talking about? So anyone can say anything. So look at this. Look at this. This is Carlos here. This is Carlos. Carlos says, but it is, but is historically proven Christmas is a pagan origin. Jesus, the apostles, and disciples never kept Christmas. Now, I don't know if you're just saying two separate statements there, uh, Carlos. Um, you say it's historically proven that Christmas is a pagan origin. Then you say Jesus, the apostles, and disciples never kept Christmas. Um, I don't know if you're saying, well, Jesus, the apostles, and disciples never kept Christmas. Therefore, that's the proof that Christmas has a pagan origin. Or if you're saying there's some separate um, historical proof that Christmas has a pagan origin. I want to say there's no connection between those two things, right? If Christians later make a, a celebration of the birth of Christ or something like that, and the disciples didn't do it, that doesn't mean it has a pagan origin. That would still be a Christian origin. That would be Christians doing it, right? It has a pagan origin if it's a pagan thing and Christians sort of absorb the pagan thing, right? Um, but, Carlos, look at what we're saying here. You're saying it's historically proven Christmas is a pagan origin. What is the historical proof? The, the, the standard narrative here has some holes in it, to, to paraphrase Sheikh Yasser Qadi. What we're told, and guys, this is something... If, you, if, you, if there, you take nothing else away from what we're saying today, learn this. Sometimes you can be told something for decades and you believe it's true and you've never been given a shred of evidence for that belief beyond you heard, you've heard a bunch of people saying it all your life. You've never actually said, wait a minute, what is the evidence for that? And I don't, I haven't studied all the same things that Mike has studied. But he's gone through the sources and he's saying, actually, guys, a lot of what you've been told is complete nonsense. Now, if you are someone who's actually read all of the same stuff and you can say, no, actually, Mike, you're misrepresenting what so and so said. He says over here, ha ha, the ancient Romans had their Christmas trees on Christmas Day or something like that. Right. That's that's what that's what you would do. What we're trying to say here again, uh, again, uh, you could prove you could you could prove me wrong. You could prove you, you could prove anything I'm saying wrong right now, and prove anything that Mike is saying is wrong right now by giving some sources. What we're saying is everyone keeps circulating the same thing without ever saying, "Here's how we know this is the case," and we've got one guy here who has gone through the sources and he's saying that's not in there, and so. This is a perfect time, even if even if Mike here turns out to be ultimately wrong, and we find out there is this proof that Christian uh, Christians uh, took this from the pagans or something like that. Um, but until then, this is one of those situations where we should all step back and go, wait a minute, we were all told this, we were never given any evidence for it, and therefore we need we need to take a closer look because there are, there are all these there are all these myths that get circulated. Um, and they just keep going on and on and on and on and on and on. And you have to challenge them at some point. 
So the, 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 I've been planning for a while to make a video on, on the Galileo affair. The idea that Galileo uh, was this victim of, of persecution from the church that was opposed to science. You take a closer look at what happened there. That is about a jillion miles from the truth. And yet, almost every, almost every atheist you'll ever run into believes that. And Christians have generally accepted that idea as well. It's total nonsense. And so this is that kind of situation where it's time to say, okay, I have this belief, in this case, this belief that Christmas was stolen from pagans. Where did I get that? Did you get that from doing some research or being given some evidence? Or did you just hear that from your parents and you heard that from the History Channel and you heard that from here and you just accepted it and never bothered to investigate it? Because that's what we're doing. We're investigating it now. And then, as, but as fast as we're investigating it, we keep hearing, oh, but it's it's proven, it's been proven, it's it's been proven true, blah, blah, blah. We don't know what you're talking about here. All right, uh, what about this second claim here? Uh, Mike Santa Claus. Says Jesus, the apostles. Oh, oh no, 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 I was, I was talking about the, in this comment here. So, oh, okay. So we're leaving it open, Carlos, to prove that Christmas has a pagan origin. But he says, Jesus, the apostles, and disciples never kept Christmas. So that is another common issue that comes up for, for Christians. And I don't know why. This, I just think, is, is absolutely silly. It's basically, if the original apostles didn't do it, we shouldn't be doing it either. And yeah, I, I've always found that strange, but there, it is it is pretty common. What are, your, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, like, with that logic, I mean, think of all the, the festivals, like, Jeremiah never kept Hanukkah, technically. Moses never kept Hanukkah. Abraham didn't keep any of the feasts. Does that mean they're bad, just because later they were incorporated I mean, that's a bad argument. I mean, if we can only do the things Jesus did, we all need to just be walking around with sandals in Palestine, and we can't use modern medicine. We can't ever live in North America because Jesus never lived in North America. Uh, we can't use the Internet because Jesus never used the Internet. I mean, it's just a pretty bad argument. Mm -hmm. I, I don't understand why they think that they can use that argument for Christmas when they don't realize that would apply to so many other things they're doing right now. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it's interesting because even, even in the Bible, you would have a biblical figure walking around and say, um, hey, here's this great thing that happened. Let me build this little monument to that so that when people ask about this later on, we'll be able to remind them of this great thing that happened. And it wasn't God saying, you shall build this thing. I mean, it, 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 sometimes it's that, but uh, a lot of times it's, hey... Uh, we want to do this thing because we know we're flawed human beings and we want to take these steps so that we always are reminded of this. That's in the Bible. That's biblical figures doing that. And so they don't get condemned for that. So anyway, uh, let's take a couple more comments. Uh, why celebrating Christmas? There's no evidence of when Jesus was born. Well, I mean... We don't know the exact date uh, that Joshua's conquest started, technically. I mean, there was actually people debating about that still. We don't know the exact date of a lot of things, but mm -hmm. we still set up a day to me remember it and to keep it, just like the things you were saying. So what if we don't know the date? I would like to remember the Incarnation. What's so wrong about that? Yeah, and I, I guess like if you had a, let's, let's suppose you adopted a child and they didn't know the child's birthday or something like that probably say all right we're going to celebrate your birthday on such and such date to give you in fact you kind of have to do that because your birthday is required on something so it seems like you'd actually have to say okay here's the date we're gonna we're gonna call your birth date or something like that now, especially if i mean if you're looking i mean the 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 incarnation the birth of christ is kind of a big event in 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 Christianity. So seems like something you'd want to you'd want to celebrate. Um, let's see. Wait, you got a question about Yuletide here. What's up? Yuletide, with that? Yeah. What oh, about with Yuletide? What about Yuletide? That's the question. Well, here's the thing. There was a, a rumors, sources that talk about there was an ancient ancient pagan festival called Yule. Now, as I said in the beginning, King Hikon put Yule on December 25th to coincide with Christmas. But here's the other thing you got to realize. The word Yule has various different meanings in Germanic English type languages. Uh, there was a man named Sir Henry Yule in the 19th century. Okay, he wasn't named after a pagan festival. Yule in English languages means a midwinter period. That's all it really means. Uh, so, for example, 
the first mention we see of, for example, Yule Logs, which people use all the time, is in Robert Herrick's poetry collection from 1648, and he calls it a Christmas log. It's not the first time it's definitively called a Yule log is in Aubrey's In the West writing of Yorkshire on Christmas Eve, 1686. And it's called a Yule log, probably because people were burning Christmas logs and they said, well, we're going to burn these all through winter. So we're just going to call it a midwinter log, Yule log. So there's no evidence Yule logs, Yule tide goes back to paganism. It just probably derives from the English word meaning a midwinter period. All right. Now we have. Uh... Now this is this is what I'm actually interested in. These uh, suppose that people supposedly giving the actual origins of some of these beliefs. Now this mm-hmm. this is how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. This is how you show that these things have a pagan origin. So Bears twenty five says in Greek mythology, bam. Wait a minute. <laughs> now I'm thinking he's joking. He says in Greek mythology, Odin travels on a chariot. Uh, Bears. You're saying Odin is part of Greek mythology? All right, let's just ignore that. In Greek mythology, Odin travels on a chariot with two horses and gives gifts to people. And Italy, there is a myth where a witch travels on a broomstick and gives gifts exactly like what Christ- Christians celebrate for Christmas, I guess. All right, go ahead. Yeah, there, there's, no, there's no evidence Odin was traveling around giving gifts. What you actually happen is Santa Claus, uh, St. Nicholas was sort of like turned into the Christmas figure in New York about the 1800s, and then he was exported all over the world. So in 1927 in Finland, a radio broadcaster named Marcus uh, Ratuio, I'm probably mispronouncing that, but he took an old pagan folk, uh, uh, god called Jolapuki, and he remorphed Jolapuki to be a Santa-like figure. Well, that happened with Odin. That happened with all these other old pagan deities. So it wasn't so much that Santa came from Odin, Jolapuki. It was the opposite. The Santa figure came out of New York in the early 1800s, exported all over the world, this tradition. And then these people in these various countries said, well, we're just going to make our own Finnish version of Santa Claus by taking an old pagan deity, Jolapuki, and morphing him to it. They did the same thing with Odin. They did the same thing in all sorts of other areas like Italy, for example. Uh, but none of those actually are mentioned in sources that predate uh, Santa Claus or Sinter Claus, the Dutch name for him. Uh, none of them actually go back to the oldest stories about these figures. Um, I have the sources on some of the oldest uh, literature we would have on Odin, like the Pros Eda or the Poetic Eda. These are old uh, Norse poems and works that date to about the 10th century or so, or sometime around there. They don't mention any of this stuff, and I have the PDFs here on my computer in front of me. None of them mention Odin flying around giving gifts to children. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, now, this is a different kind of objection. Mr. Wisdom says, Christmas has nothing to do with Christianity these days. And notice, that's a, a that's a different, completely different kind of objection. You could completely agree with that, right? So, uh, so Mr. Wisdom, notice what, what's, what's being claimed here. There, there are people who say Christianity um, took Christmas from the pagans, and it's actually a pagan holiday. And again, there, there are different ways Christians could respond to that. They could say, oh, it's a pagan holiday. Well, I don't want anything to do with that. Or they could say, yeah, it was a, started as a pagan holiday, but then Christians made it a Christian a Christian holiday, so I'm going to go ahead and celebrate it um, anyway. And what Mike here has been going through is he's claiming that's actually a false claim, that Christ, Christmas did not have a pagan origin. Um, it evolved in various ways over the centuries, but it wasn't something that was taken from the pagans. Now, if you want to respond and say, "But Christmas doesn't have anything to do uh, anything to do with Christianity," tons of people would agree with that. Would agree with that, right? That 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 what we think of as Christmas nowadays, what in the world does it have to do with uh, with celebrating the birth of Jesus? So the response to, the response to that would be like the response to anything. I mean, you could say that about your church, right? A church might get to the point where it doesn't have a lot to do with Christianity or the gospel or anything else. You don't say, well, therefore, churches had a pagan origin or something like that, right? So talking about a couple of different things, but what, what are your thoughts on on uh, what well, Christmas one is? Thing I, one thing I forgot to mention with regards to Odin, in the earliest sources, like the Prowse Edda, he doesn't even ride a sleigh. He rides an eight-legged horse. 
So he's not even in a sleigh being pulled by a horse. He's actually riding the horse, so that's a little different. But just go to 1 Corinthians 11. Paul talks about the Lord's Supper. It had been turned into this drunken feast that just was a debacle. It was it was not honoring the Lord. He doesn't say, well, you've ruined it. Now you got to throw it all out. He says, get back to what it really meant. Sure, people have abused Christmas. They've turned it into a materialistic holiday. That doesn't mean we can celebrate it for what it actually means. Go check out the video I just uploaded, The Lost Message of the Bible, where I'm trying to encourage people to get back to the real meaning of Christmas and what it was really about. So, no, just because people abuse the holidays, I mean, we have to throw it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, Mr. Wisdom, it's basically if you believe that Christmas has a Chris Christian origin and you believe that Christians have veered away from that, then you would simply call them back to remember Christmas for what it's supposed to be about. And so, yeah, t totally different kind of objection there. Um, we have a comment from Eli. Sounds like you know Eli, too. Probably, yeah. Uh, he says, hey there, David, this is Eli from the conferences. So I met a young guy named Eli uh, out in California. He says, Mike, this is Eli from the TED Talk. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm I remember. genuinely interested in this topic. When do you think the Lord was actually born and why St. Nicholas keep up the great work? Uh, me, as far as, as far as me, when he was actually born, I would say I have no idea. I would favor the spring. But as, as Mike has pointed out, you know, this is, this is, a different area from what we're used to. So they would have a wider range of possible dates when shepherds could be out. So, uh, but yeah, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, well, you might, there's a, you might have a point with the spring. Uh, Clement of Alexandria thinks that Jesus was born on May 5th and he's one of the earlier authors writing in the second century. Uh, Michael Heiser wrote uh, in his book on reversing Herman. He's uh, trying to calculate based on the stars, the wise men would have seen. He says September 11th. Another interesting theory, there are a lot of Catholic apologists that do make a pretty good argument for December 25th based on calculating Jewish feasts and when the angel would have announced to Mary and everything. So there's good possibilities. I'm not really nailed down to any because I don't really care. Uh, with regards to his second question on why St. Nicholas, there's actually a really interesting story behind that. Uh, in, as I mentioned earlier, in New York, there were a lot of Dutch immigrants in around the 1800s, and they were trying to get back in touch with their Dutch roots in America. Well, the Dutch really liked St. Nicholas. It was called Sinterklaas, and so they really celebrated his feast day on December 6th a lot. However, in New York at around the same time, Christmas had become this drunken, rioting festival, and people wanted it to get back to what it was really about. So they started writing these articles encouraging people to celebrate Christmas, and they moved Sinterklaas, St. Nicholas, to December 25th. They stopped dressing him as a Catholic priest and dressed him as a traditional Dutchman from that time period. They wore big red suits. They also encouraged to give gifts on Christmas Day instead of on New Year's Day because uh, in the 1700s, gift giving happened on New Year's Day. Well, they morphed it all. So Christmas is really like an American Dutch amalgam of different like traditions just sort of trying to make this one big conglomeration of different festivals. In other words, it's kind of like a melting pot uh, mm -hmm. festival the way it has come about today. So, guys, uh, for, for those of you who are saying, but what is – Santa Claus have to do with this or what does this have to do? Yeah, that's kind of the point here is if you're claiming this as a pagan origin, what is your actual case for that? Because uh, Mike's been able to trace a lot of the origins of a lot of these things and they don't seem to have much to do with uh, paganism. And so if your claim is, if your claim goes back to, well, if the apostles didn't do it, then I won't do it. You go ahead and try to live consistently with that for a little while. But uh, a lot of us don't share that belief, right? I believe I can do all Stop. kinds of things that the apostles never did. Um, and Stop taking antibiotics. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah, very, very strange, strange, uh, strange position. Um, so we, we fall back. We fall back to the, the again, the, the claim that Christmas has a pagan origin, which we have not seen any case for yet now matt maddox here uh he may have he may have updated this i'll have to scroll down but matt maddox has posted repeatedly ip says christmas trees weren't really until the 15th century i think he said but the book of leviticus mentions not to celebrate trees not to decorate trees for celebration how do we explain this one now you you study this more i cannot think of what he's talking about in leviticus saying don't decorate trees 
Um, are, you, are you familiar with this? I know that I know that the Jeremiah passage and so on that they use, but I can't think of anything in in Leviticus. So Matt, did did, did Matt give only? Well, there's only five verses in Leviticus that mention trees. Leviticus 19: When you come into the land, don't plant any any kind of tree for food. Okay, so it's it, this is about the the forbidden three years before when you first move in. Leviticus 23 says, and you shall take on the first day the fruit of the splendor of trees. Okay, it's about taking from the trees. Leviticus 26, then I will give you your rains in the seasons, and the land shall yield its increase, and the trees of the field shall yield fruit. I, nothing there. Leviticus 26 later in the chapter says, and your strength shall be spent in vain, for your land shall not yield its increase, and the trees of the land shall not yield their fruit. Um, nothing there. Leviticus 27, every tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the trees, it's the Lord's. I'm not sure what he's talking about. He might be talking about the Asherah poles or don't plant an Asherah type tree. This was a specific type of tree dedicated to the goddess Asherah or Astarte uh, would probably be the better term. Uh, don't plant an Asherah pole near the, uh, t uh, the altar of the Lord. OK, yeah, we're not. I mean, <laughs> Christmas trees are pine trees people decorate in their house, and it's not a ritual in the religious sense. It's a decoration it's a custom people do every year no one is trying to worship a god or the god through a christmas tree it's just a decoration it's like dressing up in red white and blue on fourth of july or putting a red white and blue ribbon on you on fourth of july just a decoration mm -hmm. um yeah so all right uh, a couple more couple more comments here uh <laughs> You, you you must get frustrated because, I mean, I've only been doing this for a couple of minutes and I'm already anno uh, annoyed, right? What do we have here? Robin Labruna says, Jeremiah 10, 2 through 5. Now, Robin, as a rule, if you come in in the middle of a discussion here, we've been, my goodness, we've been through that. Guys, do, guys, but those of you who are watching, do you see, do you see how, this, how this is? Do, do you see how this goes? We say, guys, what's the evidence that, that Christmas actually has a pagan origin? Oh, well, you know, Christmas trees and this and this and that. And then Mike actually goes through that and the actual origins. It has nothing to do with pagan origins. And then, ah, but the Bible says, you know, uh, don't 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 celebrate Christmas trees. Oh, yeah? Where? Jeremiah 10. Actually, he's talking about cutting down trees to make idols out of them. That's not what you're doing when you get a Christmas tree to decorate your house for, for, for a holiday. And then we talk about a couple other things. And then, hey... Christmas trees. What about them? Ah, Jeremiah 10. Uh, guys, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I'd say you could have convinced me. I don't, I don't know if, I don't know if Mike here is right. I don't know if he's right. Based on what I'm seeing, he sounds more right than everyone else because he gives a case for everything he's saying and no one else does. So, all right. Uh, First Christmas tree ordinance is in, is in, Alsace. It's A L S A C E. It's an ordinance from 1561. We don't hear about Christmas trees before that. Um, Marcel, again, he gives us same kind of thing. Marcel says, David and inspiring philosophy. Uh, let me let me save that for one second. I wanted to get to this one over here. All right. Jesus saves said, Christmas tradition are not pagan. Trees were worshipped as fertility gods and were brought into homes for good spirits, and that's where we get the tree into our homes from. So, nope. you've been refuted. That's the point of bringing the, the Christmas tree in there, was to bring the spirit, the good spirit, into there. And he says, that's where we get the tree into our homes from, to bring the good spirits in. I find no evidence of that in ancient sources, and from our, what I can tell is that most ancient Germanic, Norse, Gauls, uh, they thought the oak was sacred. So there's a tale of St. Boniface cutting down a sacred oak tree dedicated to Odin. Uh, Pliny the Elder says the Druids uh, were the, – the word Druid actually means oak seer or oak knower. Uh, that's what it actually meant. They, the oaks were sacred. Maximus of Tyre says the Celts indeed worship Zeus and they honor him with a lofty oak. So they didn't – pine trees were these wimpy little trees. I mean they didn't really – there's very, very little evidence that pagans thought pine trees were sacred. Oak is the one that routinely comes up. And this idea of them bringing them in their homes, maybe, but they didn't leave any records behind of this. Of this. And 
if, if they did, I mean, we're talking about Germanic tribes. They, they most likely lived in the wilderness and they didn't have like, you know, log cabins up in Britain until the Romans invaded. Uh, they were more likely, you know, people that, you know, they lived out in nature. They would live in tents, these kind of things. They did have some forts and whatnot, some houses up there. We have found archaeological evidence, but they were not like city builders like the Romans were. Uh, they were, you know, they were more wild. And there's no evidence of them bringing evergreens into their houses. Could they have? Yeah, but they didn't leave any records behind to actually say this. The idea of them doing this comes from much later writers, mostly in the 19th century. They wanted to just try to uh, come up with origins for a lot of this Christmas stuff, so they just would – half the time they were just making things up. Yeah, I see lots of people making things up. Speaking of making things up, um, Marcel Benjamin gives a, a comment – that falls into a, a family of objections. Marcel says, uh, David and inspiring philosophy. I think the only holidays Christians should be celebrating is Jewish holidays because they come straight from the Bible and Torah, God bless. Now, we've already been through this. Where are you getting the claim? Now, I'm saying this because you're, this kind of actually refutes the people who are using this. This kind of refutes the people who are using this. Um, if you th so think about that, they say only only celebrate the holidays that are mentioned in the Bible, and you're only allowed to celebrate those. I've already pointed out in the Bible you see people going around saying, "Hey, I want to set this up to remember this or to do that," and that seems perfectly perfectly fine. Uh, the example that keeps coming up, the example that keeps coming up. Uh, let's see, Roxanne here, Molina says in the super chat. Hi, I would like to know your thoughts on the Feast of Dedication, Hanukkah. Would that be more relevant for Christians to celebrate? That is actually a perfect example. What is the Feast of Dedication? That was set up after the Maccabean Revolt. The Maccabe and they rededicated the temple and they said, we're making this a holiday. Well, they're not commanded in the Torah to make that a holiday. They're not commanded to make, they said, hey, here's something we want to celebrate and remember. And so this is going to be our holiday. And then you even find it in the New Testament. Now, for the life of me, if you have a problem with people getting together saying, hey, we really want to celebrate something, so let's come up with a day that we're going to celebrate this and remember this every year and stop whatever else we're, we're doing and dedicate our attention to this. If you have a problem with that, then you should have a problem with the Feast of Dedication, <laughs> right? Just because it's mentioned in the Bible, it's mentioned in the Bible, but notice it's mentioned in the New Testament as a feast celebrated by the Jews, but where did that come from? It, it didn't come from the Torah. It didn't come from God saying to Moses, and Moses, you shall make the feast of dedication. This was, wow, after all this stuff that's been going on, we after all these, these pagans took over our stuff, now we, we took it back, we're rededicating the temple, and that seems to be fine. So guys, do, do you not see how you're completely contradicting yourself here, right? You're the, saying- The funny- Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So people get people who say we need to keep all the Jewish feasts. They need to actually do some research on the Jewish feasts uh, because they actually come from the Jews co-opting co pagan holidays. Uh, Richard Hess notes that uh, a lot of the pagan or a lot of the uh, Jewish feasts align in a lot of rituals uh, and um, on the dates. Festivals were done at the city of Emmer. He notes there's a lot of comparisons in Leviticus to Emmer 446. Uh, so what that what's seems fine they were co-oping pagan days you have the israelites moving into the promised land and he doesn't want moses and the israelite elders don't want the jews going over and doing things on pagan festival days so what do they do they set up their own jewish feast on those pagan days to compete to sort of overtake them to prevent the jews from going and partaking in these horrible pagan festivals so when people get mad even if christmas was co-oping a you know saturnalia or some other pagan festival that's what the Jews probably did very early on in their history with their own celebrations. They set them up on specific days so that no one would be tempted to worship Dagon uh, or other pagan deities uh, on those certain days. Yeah, and this uh, this issue keeps coming up over and over again, like a ton. And guys, I, I cannot understand this. I cannot. If you're saying... If you're saying you should not celebrate a holiday unless it comes from the Bible. I mean, it seems you would need that rule from the Bible or you're just you're just making up a rule about this, right? Like, 
where did God say you should only celebrate this? This uh, you should only celebrate a feast or something like that or a holiday if God said do it, right? If if that is your position, if that is your position, you just contradicted yourself because people in the Bible say we're going to celebrate this. You, you guys, you guys, you guys, gathering this in the Bible. It's okay, according to the Bible, it's okay for a group to say, you know what, here's this thing we always want to remember. So let's build a little monument to it, or let's set up a holiday that we're going to celebrate. And it's perfectly fine, according to the Bible. We see people in the Bible do it over and over again, and suddenly we get past the Bible and they say, Unless God tells you to celebrate the holiday, you can't celebrate it and you're from the devil. Well, great. You just condemned the Bible. What's going on here, guys? So, Book of Esther with Purim. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect example. Guys, there seems to be this obsession with making up rules that you can't possibly defend. And that's one thing. But notice, that's kind of what you're accusing people of doing when they celebrate Christian. You're coming up with this on your own. Guys, everything you're laying down right now as far as why... <laughs> why it would be evil and immoral to celebrate the birth of Jesus or something like that. You weren't told to do that. You weren't told that. Well, great. You weren't told your little rule there. So I don't know what you're doing, guys, but it's a, it's probably a good idea to be a little more careful uh, than that. Now, it, notice, if someone wanted to per say, hey, personally, I'm not going to celebrate any any uh, holiday that doesn't come directly from the Bible, just, hey, you know, that that's that's your decision that's uh that makes perfect sense that would fall into the category that we find in the letters of paul hey one guy thinks it's okay to eat this another guy doesn't another guy celebrates this guy another another guy doesn't hey you know come on it's not a, it's not a big deal but what you find is people jumping all over the idea hey how dare you celebrate the birth of christ how dare you do that ah oh, it's pagan and we ask over and over and over again, can you give a shred of evidence, either from the Bible that we should not be celebrating that, um, or that this is actually some sort of pagan celebration or something like that. We get all kinds of claims. Oh, here's where the Bible says it, or here's where it came from, but we never find anything that actually lines up with reality. And so, those of you who are supporting, you anti-Christmasers in the chat, got to make a better case. All right, should we check out some more comments? Sure, yeah. Um, no one's brought up mistletoe yet. I'm surprised because that's usually what they always go to. Mistletoe's clearly... Oh, well, well, I've only seen a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction, a tiny fraction of the comments. So someone might have brought up mistletoe. But go ahead go ahead and respond to that because I'm I'm sure someone's brought that up. Let me check. I can probably yeah. find it. So the idea of mistletoe is pagan is a, is a very common belief today but there's just no evidence oh it. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, first... yeah. I, I went ahead and searched for it uh native engine here says mistletoe and the holly is druid stuff that's the druid stuff okay well there is a little grain of truth in that but they probably don't know uh, what they're getting that from is there's an old old guy uh pliny the elder wrote a book called natural histories and in book 16 i believe he mentions that the gauls in france if they found mistletoe growing on an oak there you go with the oak again. Uh, they would they believed it could cure animal infertility and get rid of poison. Mm -hmm. uh, had nothing to do with December twenty fifth. Uh, had nothing to do with uh, the winter. They just if they found it on an oak, it was therefore sacred. Uh, we don't see it showing up as a Christmas tradition until Robert Herrick's poetry collection, again in the sixteen hundreds. He mentions it as, as a decoration. As a decoration, William Coles mentions it, mentions it as a decoration in the art of simpling. But we don't see the actual tradition of them kissing under the mistletoe until in Britain, not in France, but in Britain until about the late 1700s. There is no evidence that they sort of got that from paganism. In this article uh, we were looking at at the beginning, they say that in, the, in Norse mythology that Frigg, the goddess of love, promised to kiss any creature that passed beneath the evergreen sprig uh, after it, if it was used to revive her, her son, Balder. Problem, again, if I go to the Prowse Edda, or the poetic Edda, it doesn't mention this practice of Frigg ever actually offering this. It could be in another source. I, d I don't know. I can't find it. But again, these are coming in the Prowse Edda and the poetic Edda date to Christian periods. Uh, they date uh, very late. I mean, they don't date to times pre-Christian era. In fact, there are some scholars who think Balder and Loki are actually Christianized versions or, or Norse versions of Jesus and Satan just incorporated into the Norse 
pantheon. So Jesus may have been inspired by Balder and Loki may have been inspired by Satan. Uh, so, yeah, again, there's no evidence that mistletoe goes back to paganism. And even if it did, it would come from a Christianized time when pagans were taking Christian things and incorporating it into their own works. Um, I'm trying not to laugh at some of these comments here. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's who me it get kind of bad. Me Bun here said, Christmas has origins in Babylon. The son of God, Tammuz's birthday is on December 25th. And here for the case cracker, if you rearrange words of Santa, it spells Satan. Now I can, when I see that, I almost think someone's not being serious here because, ah, <laughs> I mean, there are people dumb enough to say, ah, if you rearrange the letters of Santa, it spells Satan. Guys, you, you know where Santa comes from, right? You know where Santa comes from, as in like Santa Barbara and stuff like that, right? You, you know what you, you know. What I mean, that comes from Saint, right? That's just that that spelling of Saint. You know that, right? So what are you saying? That saints, saints in a certain language are Satan. What what are you what are you what are you trying to get at here? I don't know. But uh, as for Christmas, this is this is something I find uh, interesting, Mike. Here, Christmas has origins in Babylon. The 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 sun god Tammuz's birthday is on December twenty. December 25th. Now, guys, um, here's what I find interesting, right? Notice how the origin of this keeps jumping around. <laughs> it's because of such and such in Norse mythology. It's because of Mithra. It's because of Tammuz. It's because of, well, guys, I mean, you only, you only need one to, that you can actually nail down. But, but, when you have 50, 50 things that you claim this came from, I mean, think, if you were saying, if you said Christians actually got it from this, then what What about all these other 49 people who say it came from something else? Do, do you guys see the problem here? You're saying that this, this celebration on December 25th came from this, and then as soon as we look into that, you say, no, it came from that. And then we look into that and say, no, it came from that. Well, where did it actually, do, do you know where it actually came from, if you're saying? Do you have any any idea where it actually came from because every time mike starts to respond to something you say it came from somewhere else now we're now we're at babylon christian said well, i mean christian said i wonder what they're doing in babylon <laughs> let's well, go i don't know why let's go back to babylon and get our and get our festival well i don't know why they bring up tammuz tammuz was the god of shepherds he was actually originally a human king probably because he shows up in sumerian king lists and he just sort of like became a god. He was the shepherd king kind of thing. Um, he was never said to be born on December 25th. Ironically, this is a guy that you'll see sometimes Jesus mysticists use to try to say Jesus was sort of copied from Tammuz. And I have a whole video on my channel, Jesus vs. Tammuz, where I go into the details. And it, they're nothing alike. Uh, but no, Tammuz was not a sun god. Uh, if, they meet, if they met like the sun, like S-U-N, no, he was the, the, the ancient... Uh, Mesopotamian sun god was Shamash or Utu. Uh, if they meant like S O N, like sun, like as in child sun, that 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 wasn't a thing. Uh, there was plenty of there were a lot of gods that were suns. Um, Enki, uh, Enlil, uh, Tammuz, uh, Nana, uh, Utu. I mean, a lot of them were suns. What's what is what's the point? So no, there's no evidence that this goes back to Babylon. That, that's just silly. Um. Yeah, so guys, what is it? Is it uh is it the witch on her broom delivering presents or is it Odin from Greek mythology? Now if you if you think David it's not Greek mythology. Yeah, I know that, but that was that was the claim. Uh, or is it Babylon? What what is it, guys? Cuz I'm I'm confused here because the the explanation the explanation keeps changing every 5 seconds. Yeah, um, and if they try Egypt, I mean, Egypt, once again, as far as I can tell, I can't find any festivals associated with December 25th in Egyptian history. Uh, they did think the winter solstice was on December 21st, and I don't think they had anything really exciting going on that day. They Their holidays focus more around the moving of the star, the Cirrus star. So that was when their New Year began. That's what the Ebers Papyrus says. They didn't really – they may they may have – I mean, Egyptian history is very long. They may have at some point really got – excited when the winter solstice happens but it has no connection to christmas but i can't find any sources that definitively say that joseph stalin here says 
Okay. That's his name. I'm not. I'm not just calling him Joseph Stalin. Joseph Stalin says all Mike does is give a more complicated answer of how it was actually a different group of pa pagan heathens who invented it. Is that is that what you're saying? That doesn't make any sense. I don't know what he's trying to get at there, but no, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm giving you the actual sources so you can go check for yourself. <laughs> hey, uh, Silver K says I'm off. This is not a nice approach, David. <laughs> Guys, how dare you? <laughs> Guys, it actually it actually concerns me when a bunch of people say something and it's just people have accepted it all their lives and it never crosses their minds to investigate it at any point. So we mentioned the Galileo affair, but that's kind of a, a bigger um, a bigger there's a bigger collection of myths that surround it that you can now go up to many atheists and i know there are, there are atheists who are watching now and and a lot of the atheists who watch my channel are are usually uh um mild mild atheists they're not the angry aggressive christianity is going to destroy the world if we don't stop it type type of atheists but those kinds of atheists right they we it has to be stopped or they'll destroy destroy the world or something like that um you look at what they what they claim and it's all about this war between christianity and science and you can actually trace that back. You can trace it back to certain myths that were spread. Some of them were spread by like uh, people who are anti-Catholic immigrants, right? They were they were against Catholic immigrants coming to the U.S. And so they started they started circulating these stories about how the Catholic Church was destroying science and so on. And hey, you don't want them to do that here and so on. And the bulk of their case was absolute nonsense, right? And so I'm not a Catholic. I'm not interested in defending Catholicism. But if that if the things they were saying are not true, then the things are not true. Right. They shouldn't be held up as true anyway. So they originally kind of start off as a response to, to get people riled up about Catholic immigrants. But then th the myths about the, the church's war on science and suppressing science and so on it gets absorbed into the culture and then it becomes like one of the pillars of, of atheism. And so notice if, if I were to sit back and say, Hey, you atheists who are claiming this, let's actually go through the evidence. You bring forth your claims and let's take a closer look into these issues. I would take that as something important to do. Likewise, if people around the world are believing that Christians have as one of their main holidays where they celebrate the birth of Christ, it's actually a pagan origin. Well, if that itself is a myth, if that's a myth, then we should want to look into it. But as soon as we do, a bunch of people freak out and they say, no, it is it is a pagan origin. I've been hearing it all my life. It came from this. It came from Babylon. It came from there. It came from there. Everyone gives a different answer of where it came. No one provides any evidence. And then people storm off and say, I can't take this anymore. This is so horrible. Interesting stuff. Um, uh, Joel, Abra Joel Abraham said, could you talk about the actual origin of Christmas? How did it actually begin? Now, you talked about that kind of at the, uh, at the beginning, but anything you'd like to, uh, like to add here now that we've been through I mean, what several I of the issues? That, yeah, I said earlier, Christmas is like a melting pot of just a lot of European folk traditions that just sort of assembled over time. The real origin of Christmas is 2,000 years. People are adding things to constantly you know change things i mean think about jingle bell rock for example is a new tradition that's just been added in uh so it, it's an um, it's it's a combination of european folk traditions over centuries the earliest christians were celebrating christmas very early on according to, to clement of alexandria oh they didn't have a date nailed down but he notes that it just was a lot of disagreement on the date even today the greek orthodox and the catholic church disagree on the date of christmas the greek orthodox church doesn't celebrate until january 6th so they, you know, they, they started celebrating it, of course, with worship, uh, celebrating the incarnation, and then as it, you know, moved into Europe and whatnot, and over the years they started adding things like Christmas trees, and then they started adding things like, you know, the saint, Saint Nicholas was bringing gifts and whatnot. It just is a tradition that has evolved over time based on European and American folk traditions. Same with Halloween. Same with Valentine's Day. Same with Easter. Same with just about every holiday. Thanksgiving, for example, is an American holiday that has 
changed and morphed slowly over the past you know 100 years or so. It's just the, what holidays are. The real origin is Christian. It goes back to Christians wanting to honor the incarnation. And over time, it's just gotten bigger and bigger and added more customs and uh, uh, decorations to it. Um, lovely day to serve the Lord said, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, and literally most major world religions celebrate it. If it's Christ's birth, then why do pagans celebrate it? So notice, uh, since all these people from all kinds of religions tend to celebrate Christmas now, it must have a pagan origin and not kind of the, the more obvious route that it became this big holiday of gift giving and became a, a, a big commercial enterprise because now everyone's going out and buying presents and they try to outdo each other this year. And it becomes this big celebration and people do it around the world. And then everyone starts celebrating Christmas. Notice it's, it's kind of the reverse of what's being claimed. It's being, you guys are, I don't mean all you guys. I mean, it's, 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 it's the people who are defending this sort of pagan origin. It just starts off as this pagan thing. And then Christians say, we want some of that paganism. And so they, they, they go ahead and take that. Rather than this Christian celebration evolves over 2,000 years, right? So it starts off, you just got the biblical accounts. Hey, uh, angels are celebrating the, 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 the birth of Christ and so on. Um, and then Christians eventually start celebrating the birth of Christ, and then it gets associated with all these other things, and then you get, you know, different areas are doing this in different ways, and then uh, Christmas trees and things like this, and these all become a part of it, but it becomes so big that now everyone's doing it, right? Well, that doesn't mean that it starts off as a pagan, as a pagan holiday. It just means that, that uh, I mean, it's like, it's like people from around the world now want, everyone wants Jesus on their side, right? Everyone mm -hmm. wants Jesus on their side, right? So notice, no, notice following the following the same reasoning here. Lovely day to serve the Lord. Muslims believe in Jesus, so I guess that I guess he's pagan, right? <laughs> Does that make any sense? If something because becomes so big and important that other people, other groups start adopting him into their cause, does that mean that it has a pagan origin? Guys, just think think about the think about the arguments that are that are being used here. Um, same thing here, angel. Yeah. Oh, go. Did you want to add something? Oh, there was a comment earlier of a tippy bear uh, wanted me to – she gave a super chat. She wanted me to talk about the upside-down Christmas tree. Uh, that's actually a tradition that you'll see in Poland uh, very much. They'll, they'll hang a Christmas tree upside down, but it doesn't go back to paganism. It goes back to St. Boniface – this tale about St. Boniface. Now, I'm not sure if this tale is actually true. Uh, you start seeing the upside-down tree in about the 19th century or so in Eastern Europe. But it goes back to the idea that St. Boniface cut down the oak tree, dedicated to Odin. He wasn't killed by Odin, and then after he pointed to the fir tree, the fir tree, and said it was a symbol of Christ. Uh, and so, what you see in uh, parts of Europe is they took a uh, pine tree, Christmas tree, hung it upside down to represent the Trinity, like it makes a triangle kind of thing. So, Christian in origin as well with that. Um, Angel Joseph here says, "If Christmas tree is not pagan ritual, then we must find evidence how it relates to Christianity." Otherwise, it has no relevance to our beliefs. A Angel Joseph, th there's there there's a massive collection of objections here, right? If someone says Christmas tree came from paganism, that is one kind of objection. But notice, if you say it came from paganism, that's the origin. The burden of proof is on you to show, hey, here's how this has a pagan origin. We have not seen that. We have not seen any evidence of that. Then the claim that it sounds like you're advocating is, well, if it doesn't explicitly come from a command of Jesus or the apostles or something like that, then it has no relevance to our beliefs. I would agree it has no relevance to your beliefs, right? But if you if you are if by no relevance to your beliefs you mean you can't have anything to do with it, I'd say that's nonsense. I mean I'm guess I'm guessing you wouldn't give your wife flowers because where are you getting that from? Where are you getting that from? Now, just, so so just imagine. Let, let's say, hey, there's a, we want to celebrate. Let let's suppose you know there's this great Christian movement or something that starts next year, and uh, the gospel is preached around the world and so on, and we want to celebrate the that movement starting or something like that. And so we say, hey, we're all gonna you know. Uh, hand each other flowers on that day. So you, where are you getting that? Well, according to the Bible, we're allowed to we're allowed to do stuff like that. We're allowed to commemorate days. We see them doing that. So, 
guys, I mean, I, I just want to say, I just want to say, I, I one, I don't believe you actually live consistently with that. I do not believe. I do not believe that you. It reminds me of Islam, right? I mean, uh, uh, Mike, you, you may have seen this. If the goal for many Muslims, as far as what does God want me to do, it's He wants me to live and think and talk and even go to the bathroom like a seventh century Arab, right? I have to dress like a seventh century Arab. I have to, um, I have to, you know, trim my facial hair and so on, like like Muhammad said in seventh century Arabia. I have to do all these things as a seventh century Arab, even if it makes no sense, even though, hey, the way they did things in that area was because they lived out in a desert. And hey, if you're in Norway, you're kind of in a different spot, right? But nope, God wants me to live and speak and think and do everything like a seventh century Arab. And if I do anything that does not come from, come specifically from the revelations of Muhammad, it's innovation, it's bidda, it's a horrible sin. I'm doing something that Muhammad himself did not do. So my, I, I cannot find anywhere where that comes out of Christianity. I cannot find anything that would suggest that that's how Christians are supposed to be thinking right now. And yet it's so common. And so one is, I, I don't believe you guys are consistent. I, I, do not, I do not believe that if I went to your house right now, I would find you <laughs> doing everything like a first century Christian. Um, and if I did, I would guess you're probably... <laughs> You're probably a pretty, pretty weird person. And again, I, in fact, I know, I know, I know you're not living like that, right? You're sitting here commenting in the, in the chat of Twitter. I mean, of, a, of YouTube in the comments section. I don't believe that you're actually living like a first century um, Jewish Christian. And if they're really worried about it, I mean, just use Isaiah 41, 19 to 20, where God says literally the pine tree is a symbol of the Holy One of Israel. Mm -hmm. I, okay, there, it's in the Bible. People, Christians can use pine trees then. Russian Orthodox Church here says, stop the blasphemy, Acts 17 apologetics. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are talking about. Um, uh, the lamb here, uh, this is a follow-up to something we were discussing earlier. So the lamb says, can it not be said that those that set up the Jewish festivals were guided by the Holy Spirit? And the proof of that is that these festivals made it to scripture christmas did not so follow the reasoning here ladies and gentlemen the uh initial sort of argument the claim is uh you should only you can't just make up a holiday god has to give you the holiday god has to give you that holiday and if god didn't say celebrate this holiday you have no business doing it so what what uh what holidays are we supposed to celebrate and one of the first ones that christians mentioned because it's mentioned in the new testament is the feast of dedication that's something you should be celebrating well if you look at what the feast of dedication was that was the rededication of the the the, the temple it was the rededication of the temple that's that's not that that's not even guys do you do you know what that is the the, the maccabees they have their their revolt and so on and then they they get the temple back and they rededicate it cleanse it and so on and say hey we want to we want to commemorate this event that was not god sends down a revelation and thou shalt do this and do that and, and do this and by the time you get to the new testament it's a holiday why because they made it a holiday and so they said hey here's this really important thing to us that we want to celebrate and remember and you get to the new testament it's already a holiday so according to that picture then human beings are allowed to say hey we're making we're making a holiday here and then so the response claim can it not be said that those that set up the jewish festivals were guided by the holy spirit and the proof of that is that these festivals made it to scripture well you said can it not be said yes it can be said but pretty much anything can be said yes it can be said the question is what evidence do you have for it are you just saying hey you want to believe that no notice what you notice what you just did the lamb can it not be said that the holy spirit <laughs> made these people make that holiday and that the evidence now you're just now you're just going to make something up about the holy spirit to defend what to defend an ultimate claim about not celebrating christmas in or so let me get this straight you can't just make up christmas but i will make up something about the holy spirit right now i will make something up i will say the holy spirit got them to do that what's your basis for that what's your basis for that you're just saying it this is this is this is the confusing part uh this is the confusing part, Mike. It's that 
everyone's in a panic mode about celebrating the birth of Christ when it didn't when you know you weren't commanded to celebrate the birth of Christ on December 25th and then if you say why should that be a problem you'll get all of these things that people are making up if it's okay for you to make up 50 rules about why you shouldn't celebrate it why can't someone make up one one holiday you're just making things up left and right and even bringing the holy bring in, even bringing the I say the holy spirit did that what's your basis <laughs> none well, even at that, it's, no one is trying to worship Jesus through Christmas trees or any Christmas tradition. We're not saying we can only worship Jesus on this day. We're not saying you have to celebrate Christmas. It's just a day Christians can remember the Incarnation. Why is that so wrong? In the book of Esther, they celebrate Purim. Uh, Purim. Mm -hmm. I forget how to pronounce that. But again, God does never ordains that holiday. God is not even mentioned in the book of Esther, surprisingly. Uh, so where does it come from? Well, the Jews just made it up because they wanted to remember what a great day that was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so guys, guys, uh, get back to the to the to the basic claims here, right? No one's saying you have to celebrate Christmas. No one's saying you have to have a, a Christmas tree. No one's saying you have to do these things. It's as a Christian, should you have a problem with this? Is there a is there a moral objection? Is there a scriptural objection? Because basically. You could have an objection from the Bible, something in the Bible saying, do not celebrate Christmas. Do not do this. Do not have a Christmas tree or something like that. Um, do not give presents or something like that. You could have something from the Bible or you could show that, you know, something has a is a is actually a pagan celebration in disguise. And you'd also have to make the further argument that even if something gets adopted by Christianity, if it has any sort of pagan origin, you, you do away with it. You'd have to make that case. Um, what we're talking about here is what, what's your basis for any of this? When we say, hey, what's your basis for saying something in Scripture? You either twist a Bible passage, which is what happened in Jeremiah 10, and then we had the claim about Leviticus, no evidence there. Um, so you either twist a Bible Scripture, or you make up a rule that is not itself found, found in the Bible. And so on what basis do you get to make up rules that then apply to all Christians? Do you believe that you are now an infallible source? <laughs> right? Notice we're no longer sola scriptura here, my friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's 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 the Bible and you. <laughs> the Bible and you are making the rules here because you come up with all these rules. Oh, you can't do this. Unless God has said something, then you cannot celebrate it. Where are you getting that from? I just made it up. Okay. Uh, so you, But at the end of the day, one, we're not seeing anything from the Bible that says don't celebrate Christmas. We're not seeing any, any connection between the origins of this Christian holiday and paganism. The claims that are normally made are totally bogus once you go back to the to the sources like Mike has. And so we're not saying, hey, you have to celebrate Christmas. You're saying, hey, if you if you don't want to celebrate Christmas because you think it's pagan or something like that, you need to take a closer look. Um, but me, again, I treat it like like other things in the Bible. Hey, one person celebrates this day. Another guy doesn't. One person thinks he can eat this food. Another guy thinks it's wrong to eat that food. Hey, let each one be convinced in his own mind. What we're saying is don't come with false claims. Don't come, don't come with false claims. You don't want to celebrate Christmas, don't celebrate Christmas. No one's making you. Um, hey. Yeah, we're, and you know, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, I've I been talking I've been talking way too much. You're the you're the you're the guest here. I just keep getting annoyed that every time I look at the comments, I see something that we talked about 30 minutes ago. <laughs> oh yeah. That that is literally my life when it comes to this topic. Uh, but I mean there's nothing wrong with celebrating Jesus' birth because you're just following the example of the uh, Magi. They came to celebrate Jesus' birth. Why can't we follow their example and celebrate Jesus' birth in similar ways? We give gifts. We honor the Incarnation. I mean, it's literally in the Bible celebrating Jesus' birth. Mm -hmm. So, sure, there is no verse in, like, Acts or something about the Christians getting together to honor the Incarnation. But in the Gospels, it does say the Magi were celebrating Jesus' birth. So why can't we follow their example and do the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Veronica at the well here says, uh, when God instituted marriage, he gave no commandment to celebrate the wedding. Do you celebrate your <laughs> wedding? So most people celebrate your anniversary. So guys, all of you who are, who are, uh, all of you who are uh, running around saying, oh, God did not command you to celebrate that. It's pagan. Well, you know, wedding anniversaries now are, are, are pagan because you weren't, you weren't ordered to, to celebrate those. So, um, all right. Uh, anything else? Uh, anything else you want to you want to go to? Any other objections that I, I, I guarantee? I guarantee you that 
I missed 95% of the responses, although I, I am pretty sure that a lot of those were repetitions of things that we um, that we already covered. So any, anything else that, that's common that, you're, that you've heard before that you'd like to address? No, we covered everything. We covered the date. It doesn't go back to Sol Invictus, Saturnalia, Roman celebration of the winter solstice. Uh, it doesn't go back to the birth of Mithra because there was never any date for Mithra's birthday. We covered Yule Logs. We covered sacred trees among the Druids, they, like the oak, not the pine. Uh, we covered mistletoe. We covered the origin of Christmas trees. We covered Santa Claus going back to Sinterklaas. So we, we covered everything. And if you go to my channel, I have a video on I have videos on Christmas. I have videos on Valentine's Day. It's not pagan. I have videos on Easter. It's not pagan. I even have a video on Halloween because Halloween is not pagan either. And next year I'll do a video on Thanksgiving. And I'll but, but that one won't be. No one says that's pagan. But that one will be if Thanksgiving is racist or not. Does mm -hmm. it go back to genocidal origins and? No, that one's also incorrect as well. So I got a pretty good book I'm going to be covering, which has a lot of the original sources from the Puritans, like their own letters and ordinance that uh, covers a lot of that stuff that I'm going to go through. So look, when people bring up these holidays, you can go to my channel. The videos are right there. You can use them if ever you, whenever you need them. All the sources are in them, and that should help you out when people make these ridiculous claims that these holidays go back to paganism. And uh, you're not just a holiday guy, though, right? No, I'm not just a holiday guy. That's like my that's one of my side quests. Uh -huh. Most of what I do is defending Christianity, uh, giving arguments for God's existence. I have a big series coming up on archaeology. I'm going to cover the Exodus, uh, the census of Quirinius, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, and then I'm going to have arguments for God's existence as well. Uh, I'm going to do some stuff on philosophy of mind, uh, the problem of suffering as well, and then I'm going to get into Old Testament law and go through a lot of stuff with regards to the cultural context surrounding that. So I cover a lot of various topics with, with regards to Christianity. And uh, so, yeah, and guys, we, we focused mostly on uh, complaints, um, complaints about Christmas and the different kinds, either trying to show that the Bible condemns Christians celebrating a holiday like Christmas uh, or claims that Christmas actually has a pagan origin. Didn't find any good cases there. We do want to point out that Christians on the whole seem to be somewhere along. Uh, we have a comment here from uh, Dove uh, Welventhal who said, thou shalt not make up thou shalt nots yourself. <laughs> that goes back to what I was saying earlier. Guys, it's all this stuff about you're not allowed to do this, you're not allowed to do that. The biblical perspective, the biblical perspective is when I was talking about Paul with, hey, if you don't believe it's okay to eat that, don't eat that. And if, if this guy over here believes it's okay to eat that, then let him let him eat that, right? The This idea here is, hey, we have all of these essential, important things that we have to agree on, ladies and gentlemen. On the on the non-essentials, on all these other things, you, you, you shouldn't be getting too upset over, over some of these things. And so th the perspective of, of tons of Christians on this is, uh, uh, Nancy here says, Christmas is the day we celebrate Jesus' birth. I literally don't see a problem with that, right? Uh, that's, yeah, th that sums up, I would say, the perspective of most uh, most Christians. What, what I think we have, though, Mike, is uh, because most Christians just take it for granted, of course, we celebrate, the birth, we celebrate the birth of Jesus into the world on that day. They don't make a big deal of running around trying to defend it, whereas the people who are obsessed with the pagan origins theory and stuff like that, they're, a lot of them are obsessed with it. And so any t I'm, I'm saying this because every time I mention the word Christmas in any way uh, in a video or in a comment or something like that, there's someone ready to pounce. Ah, that's a pagan, <laughs> even if it has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. But um, so in other words, it I think it seems like there are more of them than they are when I'm guessing they're a, they're a minority. What, what, do you, what are your thoughts? What percentage of people do you think are anti-Christmas? Well, maybe 10%, but it's the same with like, you know, a uh, review at a restaurant. You're only going to comment if you're angry about it. That's true. Very few people will go to restaurants that are happy or gonna like, I'm going to go give them five stars. That's just most people who comment are the, the angry customers. So most of the people who are going to comment on Christmas are like the 10% of people who actually think it is pagan and really just want to get you or something or think they're more... They, they think they're doing you a favor sometimes or they think they're showing you how intelligent they are because they know the true origins. 
And really, they don't know what they're talking about. They just are repeating the same rumors that are spread around without any 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 evidence. But it's been told so often in today's world that people just assume Christmas goes back to a pagan holiday. But when you start diving in, there's just no evidence of it. Um, Car- Carmel Crunk here said, did Puritans start the Christmas is pagan belief? Now, it, it goes back earlier than that. But as far as the modern version of that... Uh... They did believe it was. I'm not sure if they started that idea. Uh, there, there's always been rumors that something might go back to paganism. Why? Pe- people love patterns. They love connecting patterns, making patterns where there, there aren't. And the Puritans saw things that didn't, they didn't find in the Bible. Well, it had to come from somewhere, therefore it's pagan. Same, same mentality. Uh, people want there to be a pattern. They just can't accept that it may have come from some sort of like European folk tradition which is the origin of most modern holidays today, uh, the four big ones, that is, uh, Halloween, Christmas, Easter, and uh, Valentine's Day. Uh, but no, I don't know if they actually started it, but they definitely did think it may have gone back to paganism, even though there was no evidence to support it. Um, <laughs> Platinum Brunette says, the pagan origins argument was popularized by stingy boyfriends. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. You got that, ladies and gentlemen? It's guys who don't want to buy gifts for their girlfriends, so they say that Christmas is pagan. It's funny because I'm saying that because I was kind of like that with holidays. Like uh, for years, I was like that with uh, um, what's the one in February? Valentine's Valentine's Day. Day. Yeah, for years I was like that with Valentine's Day, and it's not because I think pagan origins or something like that. It's I think in terms of. It's manipulation, right? It's companies <laughs> wanting, to, it's com- card companies, <laughs> card companies and chocolate companies and stuff like that. They want to make all these holidays throughout the year so that everything is, everyone's always buying their stuff. And then, so there has to be a grandparents day and a, you know, teacher's day and every, there has to be a day for everything so that every day is something where you're running out and, and buying something. So for years, I was like, I don't want to, uh, I really don't want to get my get my wife something because I feel like I'm submitting I'm submitting to the uh, <laughs> to the uh, the manipulation. But I got to a point where like it's buying it's you know, it's buying flowers and and stuff like that. It's is you know, gosh, it's not it's it's not like I've fallen for being manipulated into being a Nazi or something like that. I'm they're making me get some flowers and uh, you know it's it's. It's kind of good to make sure you get your wife flowers sometimes. So it's not like they're manipulating you into doing something evil. They're manipulating you into getting a gift for your wife. And so, okay, well, I could probably, I could probably use, and a lot of other guys could probably use a kick in the pants like that. Hey, guys, if you, if you, if you haven't gotten your wife something recently, get her some flowers, man. That's not exactly some, some terrible, horrible thing. Um, you got to get yourself a practical woman because I have a. One year for Valentine's Day, my wife said she wanted a new knife for the kitchen, and I thought she was playing a trick on me. I thought it was a test. I was like, this is a trick, right? You actually want flowers or jewelry or something. No, she actually wanted a a knife to cut things in the kitchen. That's cool. (laughs) It's good. She's very practical. It's good that it wasn't to – it's it's good that it wasn't like to cut you or something like that (laughs) because – Give me a knife. And uh, fi- final comment here from from Dave M. This is just a perfect example. So we pointed out, guys, we think that Christians are, are generally on the same page here as far as, hey, we're celebrating the birth of Christ. Has it become too commercialized? Yes, of course. Uh, do we need to do do Christians need to focus more on on what this holiday is actually for? Of course. But don't make stuff up about it and don't make up unbiblical rules. And then after everything we said, after everything we've been through in the past you know, hour and 40 minutes, after everything we've been through, Dave M. comes and says, respectfully, this is totally inaccurate. Christmas was adopted with pagan values as a way to Christianize the existing pagan communities. And it's basically right what we started off with. And we asked this entire live stream, give us a shred of evidence for that. No one ever did. All we got was a bunch of claims. Christmas, no, it was, it was taken from Babylon. It was taken from Odin. It was taken from this. It was taken from that. Never a shred of, never a shred of any kind of evidence. So is, is that is that basically your experience? Because you put out videos on this, 
uh, going a while back. So I'm sure you've gotten a ton of comments and feedback on that. Is it your experience that this is pretty much it? This is all I do. And it wouldn't be hard. They have, to, they have to be like, go to Macrobius, book two, chapter three. It's right there kind of thing. Or it's in this one inscription. Here it's been published in this paper kind of thing. Instead, I get just Google it. And I have to remind them that not everything on the internet, everything they read on the internet is true. Sometimes I'll get uh, vague connections like it's like, oh, it's in North mythology over here somewhere. OK, where? Or sometimes I'll get like these random quotes from like uh, historians talking about something outside of their field saying it's pagan and i'm like okay so what um i could give you historians right now that say jesus rose from the dead atheists aren't just going to accept that just because some guy who's an historian said it they need actual evidence but again no one ever gives me any evidence that it goes back to paganism it's just vague assertions uh blogs or articles that have no that are not sourced properly have no citations so the rabbit trail tends to end there (laughs) And here we have a cool uh, cool joke here. Robin DeBank says, Christmas was originally an Islamic holiday. Lol, do your research. <laughs> and so that's actually perfect. And, and maybe the best way to respond is uh, some mockery like that. Like just make something up because that's what other people are doing. Sometimes that's appropriate. Uh, it's basically, if someone comes along and says, no, it's a pagan holiday, you want to give them some time to try and defend their points. And if they can't, then you know start pointing it out. But after their point has been refuted 19 times and they still keep saying it, then, then you might just want to, uh, might just want to start making stuff up as a, as a way of pointing out what they're doing. All right. Well, uh, again, inspiring philosophy, the link to the channel is in the description box. Also, if you'd like to support the work he's doing and he's doing, uh, I focus a lot on Islam. He focuses a lot on dealing with uh, claims of atheists and objections of atheists, objections to the Bible. And so, guys, something important to support, link to his uh, Patreon, is in the description box. Uh, One of the biggest Christian YouTube channels there is, and there's a reason for it. He's putting out a lot of awesome content. Um, So, subscribe to his channel, check out some more of his videos, and... um, and if you if you uh, if you can go ahead and support his channel because guys, Christians had better do some great work on the internet because if we're not using it, someone else will. All right, thanks to uh, IP for joining, and uh, I'm trying to think of when I'm going to be on. Oh, I'm going to be on tomorrow. Okay, I was trying to think of the next time I was going to be live. I'm going to be live tomorrow with Sam Shimon and Tony Costa talking about the virgin birth in Christianity and Islam. So we're going to be comparing the virgin birth of Jesus in Christianity and Islam. And unless something goes horribly wrong, catch you all then.